Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to cross the Oresund to Denmark once again, and we're going to revisit one of my favourite Danish craft breweries, actually. I've had some very good experiences with these guys before. So, for this review, we are going to return to Gamma Brewing Company, who are, of course, known for their New England IPAs these days, and we're going to have a little look at the Green Gack, which comes in at 7% ABV, and, of course, this one is yet another of the New England IPAs. So, so looking forward to trying this one. Basically when I go across to Copenhagen and I end up in Shiosk, this is a brewery that I always ask them, you know, what have you got new from these guys? Because you'll always find it some really, really good beers. And if you can find things in different styles from them as well, those always turn out to be very interesting. But the primary focus of this brewery is mainly the kind of New England IPAs and stuff like this. But really looking forward to trying this one. And as always, I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer. So anyway, as is usual with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Gamma Brewing Company before. No doubt there will be some more in the fairly near future. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're actually interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Danish beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, on to my brewery notes then. So Gamma Brewing Company was founded back in 2014 by four friends in Copenhagen who were bartenders in the various beer bars that you'll find around the city. Because of course, Copenhagen is arguably the best craft beer city in Europe these days and if not one of the best in the world and um, but they basically talked about how it would be cool to have their own brewery and they've since taken in another co-owner to the team after starting the company so now the team at the brewery are Jakob, Anders, Jesper, Koi and Nick but all of these guys had a little bit of home brewing experience two of them had also worked in Ulls Nebkeren in Copenhagen who apparently purchased the former Stronzo brewery up in Gorlose and this later went on to become Ull Collective which is still in existence today but apparently they were invited to join Old Collective. They got a good deal on a 20 hectolitre tank and they started the brewery without any experience of having run a business before. But it went very well for them and they've expanded a good number of times now. Their capacity has grown a hell of a lot since they first started out and they're now producing somewhere in the region of 500 hectolitres of beer per year. And they're starting to export to Germany, the Netherlands, Sweden and a couple of other countries around Europe now as well. One of the co-owners of this brewery is also a co-owner at the May and Ulsnedkeren Bar in Aarhus as well. So there is that little bit of a partnership going on there as well. But Old Collective is basically this old brewery, or well not old brewery, but this facility up in Gorlose to the northwest of Copenhagen and it's home to uh, Ulsnedkeren who brew their own beers. I still need to review one of those for you on the channel. There's Gamma Brewing up there as well. There's Dry and Bitter and uh, I think there's a few other ones that have also been there as well. Ulsnedkeren were also brewing the Bad Seed beers under contract for a period of time but they now have their own brewery and I think Ghost and Rooster were brewing there for a period of time as well actually. So Ulsnedkeren um, and uh, I think Ulsnedkeren I guess are maybe the, the kind of top guys at this place but then all of the other ones are all taking part as well but really interesting place hopefully I can get up there and have a little look at it at some point too you know uh, Toil are also building a new brewery out in Sveningi it seems to be the age at the moment in Copenhagen where a lot of these former kind of gypsy brewers are starting to get their own places together so it's a very interesting time in the Danish craft beer scene at the moment I have to say but yeah that's all you really need to know about Gamma Brewing Company at the moment like I said one of the Danish breweries that you definitely Definitely need to check out if you haven't already, particularly if you're a big fan of the New England IPAs. But yeah, let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer then. If you want to learn more, of course, you can check out the brewery website in the description below. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And if you're interested in all the different beers that they've done, I'd recommend that you check out the, uh, the Rape Beer and Untapped pages then. So yeah, let's get on to the tasting of this beer then. So this one, as I mentioned to you earlier, is a 7% New England IPA. It's hot with Azaka. Mosaic Simcoe and it's got a malt base of Pilsner and Carapils malts with some oats and wheat and apparently it uses a WLP 066 yeast which is quite a popular one when it comes to New England IPAs. So um, yeah let's get on with the actual tasting then. As you can see really nice artwork on this one which is what you always get from Gamma. It's almost a little bit like 
I don't know, is it right to call it abstract art? You know, to be honest with you, when it comes to paintings and things, I'm always just like, yeah, it's very pretty, it's quite nice. I'm not the most artistically gifted person when it comes to painting and all this. I was a music man playing Spanish guitar and drums and all of this kind of thing. Um, but yeah, no, no, I don't know all that much about art styles. Peter over at the Clueless Drinker, I'm sure, is the one who uh, is able to tell you all about that. But yeah, really nicely presented can this one. You always get this from Gamma, 440 millilitres. So without further ado, let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then. What? Oh no, it's fine, it's in good condition. Um, a big shout out as well in this video to my friend Alan who brought this beer over from Copenhagen with him to so that I could review it because I wasn't I don't think I've got plans to be in Copenhagen for the next little while so he very kindly popped into Shiosk and picked up a few things for me massive thank you to him you'll see a few other beers that he brought me as well but um yeah as you can see with this beer then as you would expect it's poured a lovely kind of bright golden yellowish colour. This one definitely leans more towards the yellow end of things when it comes to the New England IPAs. If I put my fingers behind the glass you can see it's really nice and quite uh, hazy. In fairness this isn't the haziest one that I've come across. You will find some other ones um, that are a little bit more kind of gloopy and things like this but this one just has a nice level to it. Um, as you can see there's a bit of finger of a frothy. I would say I think it's a creamy coloured head on this one. It's it's got a bit of like perfect white to it, but it does have a little tinge of creaminess to it in the middle. So um yeah, let's go with a creamy coloured head on this one. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and a few little ones just heading up towards the bottom of that head there. But you know, overall it looks very, very nice and nothing really surprising about this one when you consider what kind of beer it is. One thing I'm gonna say about this as well before we check out the aroma is that as soon as you open up this can, I think the Simcoe comes right at you. Um, you know, Mosaic, it's a hop that's famous for its kind of juicy tangerines. Um, Azaka's quite a tangerine orange hop with a little bit of pineapple from what I remember as well. And uh, Simcoe is all about that sort of milkshakey, you know, um, passion fruity you note. And to me, that was what really jumped out of the aroma um, of this one for me as soon as I opened up the can. It's, it's a beautiful smelling beer, this, but let's take a closer look at the aroma and, you know, examine it a bit more closely. But yeah, that's really nice. Um, for me, it's interesting too because Simcoe comes across as quite a a nostalgic hop, you know, I remember when Brewdog, you know, the first guys that I really drank beer from, um, you know, when they were starting to play around with Simcoe and Citra and all these kind of things, like Simcoe I find just makes you step back about five years, uh, six, well, probably a bit more than that, seven or eight years maybe in time, I'm getting old these days, but um, yeah, it really makes me go back to my um, very early twenties and, uh, you know, just remember these IPAs that I had back in the day, the old West Coast IPAs. But um, the aroma of this beer, again, is beautiful. So malt base is pretty much what you'd expect. You can smell that nice white bready wheaty sort of thing in there. The oaty creaminess comes out nicely. It does actually come across quite light, to be honest with you. And I think that'll be the pills and the carapils coming out there. I've noticed that that's getting a little bit more popular when it comes to these New England IPAs. It's sticking a little bit of... Um, sort of biscuity and uh, pilsner kind of crispness in there as well. I've noticed that that's, that seems to be catching on a little bit and it's something that I really like. I've always been a big fan of German malts. My whole love of beer started with the German uh, traditional beers when I lived in Heidelberg. But, um, well, not when I lived in Heidelberg, when I lived with my German flatmate in Aberdeen and then of course became Heidelberg. But um, yeah, the, the base of this beer does have a little bit of that German edge to it. It comes across really nice and light, but it still has that creaminess and that smoothness you'd expect from the oats and the wheat. On the hoppy side of things then, the green side of the hops for me, this one comes across as being quite grassy. There's a little bit of a floral quality in there, but I would say it's more of um, a kind of grassiness. You're also picking up that little bit of earthiness that you'll sometimes get from Mosaic as well. Mosaic does have a distinctive little bit of earthiness along with the... the um, tangerine notes but yeah the fruity side of things is really nice if you take this aroma in very deeply that's when you'll get the passion fruit the passion fruit I think comes out at the uh, the back of the nose and that's the Simcoe but then the juicy orangey notes that the beer has they're coming out a little bit more at the front of the nose and that is a kind of mix of the Azaka and the Mosaic for me um, but that orange, it really it takes your nose a little bit of time to adjust to the orange, I think. But again, that's coming out at the front of the nose. And I want to say there's a little bit more of a tropical fruity complexity to it, like a little bit of pineapple or... Um, could be a little bit peachy or something like that. It does, there's a little bit of tropical sharpness in there. 
um, but definitely passion fruit, definitely those juicy oranges. I think the oranges, once your nose adjusts to this, they start to dominate the aroma. And they kind of match up quite well with the little bit of biscuity sweetness that you find in the beer as well in the aroma. Um, but there's a little bit of a, a sort of papaya -y, pineapple -y type thing coming out of this one as well. But um, overall, this is a really nice smelling New England IPA. It definitely leans towards the juicier end of the spectrum. Um, and it, it comes across as being quite crisp, I think, and quite light in the aroma as well. Um, of course, you can get the double IPAs that will be 8 and 9%, and maybe they'll um, not have quite the same level of crispness in the aroma, but um, at 7%, you do expect this one to be kind of in the middle and have that little bit of drinkability to it. But yeah, as I always say, take a bit of time and enjoy the aroma before you taste the beer, but we're going to have a look at this one now and see how we get on. This one is the Green Gack, another New England IPA at 7% ABV from Gamma Brewing Company in Gorlose on Zealand over in Denmark. Let's get stuck in. Slanger, skull. Yeah, that's another really pretty damn nice beer. And um, this one, to me, compared to some of the other ones that I've had from Gamma, this one comes out. It really does that. That 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 kind of. Pilsnery base that it has, it really gives it a really a, a lovely kind of drinkable edge to it. To be honest with you, I really like that about this beer. I have to say, yeah. I really like how this goes together. And um, this beer gets a thumbs up from me. This is definitely a bit different. From the other gamma ones that I've had, a lot of the other gamma ones have been very kind of big and thick and stuff like this. This one just tones it down a little bit and it really works actually. Um, so yeah, that's one of the things. I mean, in recent videos I've said, oh yeah, there's, you know, I've, I've almost been getting a little bit bored of New England IPAs. Because so many people are doing them these days. Um, but it just goes to show you, when you try something like this, there can be a few different um, different things in there. But this style seems to, it's been sticking around for quite a long time actually, but still, you know, credit to Gamma, they've managed to pull off something that I think is a little bit different here. So yeah, let's try and break this down then. So, in the middle of your palate, straight away, you're going to have that nice, kind of white bready, wheaty sort of thing. That blankets the middle of your tongue. It doesn't feel overly heavy in the, in the flavour. I mean, it just it blankets the middle of your tongue and then it thickens up a wee bit the further you go into the aftertaste. And you can feel if you move further towards the middle of your palate, there is a little touch of a kind of OT creaminess in there as well. There's a little bit of a biscuity quality there in the very centre of your tongue too. That'll be from the Pilsner and the Carapils malt. But you can feel, I mean, the further you go into the aftertaste, you can feel the centre of your palate just drying out a little bit and becoming that little bit more crisp actually. Um, and that really works for this beer. I really like that kind of, um, just that little bit of lighter drinkability that you have in there. The beer really has that... Um, light kind of edge to it actually. It's it's I don't know how to describe it. I mean if you're a great fan if it's it's almost a little bit like some of these Czech lager beers to be honest with you. It's it's got a little bit of that kind of um breadiness to it, but it's got a little bit of the German kind of crispness in there as well, which is really nice. So just pay attention to the malt base on this one a little bit because I think it's a little bit quirky. But it definitely suits how this beer goes together to be honest with you. So hoppy side of things then, back corners of the palate you've got a nice little bit of earthiness there. As you come further forward on the sides of your tongue you can feel um, it does become a little bit more floral. Um, it's not too big in terms of its kind of floral aromaticity though on the sides of the, the tongue. It's not too high an IBU on this beer I think. Um, as you go round the front curve of the palate though it becomes that little bit lighter and grassy and then behind the front curve of the tongue you feel that nice oily bubble just pushing its way uh, or just rolling its way across the front of the tongue and that's where you get these nice juicy fruity esters out of the beer. So yeah, if you go to the back of that oily bubble, that's where you get the, the things from the Simcoe. You get that nice little bit of passion fruit there but it's not too pungent as it, or is it, it's not quite as strong and as dark as you might get from say Galaxy which is another big passion fruity hop. Idaho 7, of course, is another one that's become
becoming quite popular when it comes to passion fruity flavours. But yeah, nice little bit of a passion fruity note there, but it's nice and quite light and juicy as I was saying. And as you come further forward on the tongue, you can feel the flavour just, it, it evolves to be a little bit like papaya almost. And then as you get right towards, um, if you as you move further towards the kind of tip of the tongue, that's where you get the tangerine orangey notes coming out from the azaka and the mosaic. And I think because you've got the two of them there, they come across as a little bit more oily, but they still have that lighter, juicy flavour that you would expect from um, from either of those hops individually. And I also think if you move towards the very kind of front edge of the tongue, there's a little bit of the pineapple note that's one of the complexities that you can often get from... Uh, from Azaka as well. But I think the oily nature of the orange, it kind of builds a good bridge between this kind of the slightly biscuity note that's in the middle of the palate here as well. And um, that's a really interesting perspective on this beer, I think. Yeah. This one, um, it really is very nice. What I'll say about it in comparison to other Gam beers is this one is not quite as in your face and bold as you'll find from some of the other beers, but it really has a very nice drinkability and sessionability to it. Um, you know what this is? This is to me. If I was drinking a series of um, Gamma IPAs in a row, this is probably one of the ones you might try one of the pale ales first because they do a couple of pale ales and they've got a few that are lower in alcohol than this. This is maybe like the second beer or so that you would try in a series. You would have this one as a light kind of thing to get your palate ready. Then you'd try one of the big thicker IPAs and move on to the doubles and triples and things like that. This is a nice sort of. Um, Night Starter IPA, if that makes sense. This is the this, this is a good beer that's the first one you would have when you go into the bar. Whereas I think some of the other Gamma ones, um, you know, they're the sort of beer and food. Well, is it right to say, are they? They're the ones that are a bit more nerdy almost, and they're just a little bit more in your face. But I really like that about this beer. This is a nice sort of game starter one. I feel like it's maybe fair to say that as well that it's an IPA that has a little bit of the character of a session IP in some sense, but it gets a thumbs up from me anyway, and um, I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink this one again, they've done a nice job of this, so yeah, I mean it's given me a little bit of gas this one, hmm, but the carbonation isn't even too much, but on that note, we will go and have a little look at the mouthfeel then, so for this beer, I would say that this is definitely mid-bodied, it's at the kind of lower end of mid-bodied, yeah, lower end of mid-bodied, Carbonation is very smooth on this one. It does have a little bit of a wetness to the mouthfeel, a bit of a crispness in there as well. Smoothness in the malt base, a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a, a sweetness in the middle of the palate, like I was saying. But the malt base mainly quite smooth. This one, it's not the creamiest of New England IPAs that you're going to come across. Um, on the hoppy side of things, nice little bit of bitterness. Um, I'd say we're talking maybe. I think you're you're talking about 25 IBUs in this one. It's a bit lower than the standard 30, I think. Um, but you've also got some lovely juicy fruity qualities to this one as well. But overall, this is another very, very solid New England IPA from Gamma. A little bit more sessionable, I think, than some of the other ones. But um, it definitely gets a thumbs up from me. So make sure you try this one if you get the chance. I certainly wouldn't hesitate to try this beer again. So, um, yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. Another awesome beer from Gamma Brewing that you should check out if you get the chance. So, yeah, this was the Green Gack. It's 7% ABV. Another New England IPA from Gamma Brewing in Gorlosa, just to the northwest of Copenhagen. A brewery that you definitely need to check out if you get the chance. And uh, I'm sure you'll be seeing me review some more IPAs and stuff like that from these guys in the near future. So yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Gamma Brewing Company as well. Um, and I will catch you guys very soon with more. Check out my social media and I'll catch you guys later. Make sure you go and try some of these Gamma Brewing Company beers if you find yourself over in Copenhagen or indeed anywhere in Denmark. I think they are kind of distributed nationwide to most of the good beer shops. So yeah, until the next time, slange just now and I'll catch you guys very soon. This one is the Green Gack 7% New England IPA from Gamma Brewing in Gorlose over on Sealand in Denmark. Slange, skull, cheers. <laughs>